This is the second in three tutorials on how to make a calculator in Flash. In this tutorial we'll be mostly exploring um, the code. In the last tutorial we built this GUI. In this tutorial we're going to make the code that will make the GUI function um, properly. So let's go and look at our code. At the top we have all of our event listeners. These should be the same as what you did in the last tutorial. If you don't have these correctly, check back in the last tutorial. Now, I've created several variables. And these variables are going to help me with the operation of the calculator. The first set of variables is what I've called input 1 and input 2. In order to do most mathematical functions, you need two um, numbers to work with. So input 1 will be our first number, input 2 will be our second number. You'll notice that I've set these equal to 0 to begin with. The next variable is a string, and I've called it op. And this variable is going to hold what, which of the operators has been pressed. So plus, minus, multiply, divide. We need to store that information so that we can use it. And then I have several Boolean flags. Basically, these Booleans are going to tell me um, what buttons have been pressed in the past. And that will help me determine what I should do at any given time. So op pressed will turn to true once an operator has been pressed. Deck press will turn to true once the decimal button has been pressed because we can't have multiple decimals, for example, in a number. And equal pressed will turn to true once we've pressed the equals button. So let's go down and look. I've massively changed num click and I'm using a couple tricks in here. This maybe makes the code a little more confusing to read, but it certainly makes it shorter. I wanted you to do what you did in the first tutorial so you could understand what was happening. This is a shortcut. The first thing I want you to look at is this thing that I've called num button. And it is keeping track of which button is being pressed. And that's the same as what you had in the first tutorial. We also have button val, which is a string. And button val is going to be used to hold what the actual value of the button is as opposed to its name. This first if statement, what we're saying with this is if equal has been pressed, then we're going to change equal press to false. So we're flipping that flag and we're going to set the screen to blank. The reason we're doing that is that once equal has been pressed, when we start to type a new number, we don't want it to add on to what the result was from the last number. We want a new number to start. The next one is we're checking to see if the press has been numdec, which is the decimal number or the decimal point. Next, we're checking to see if the num button, so the button that's been pressed, is the decimal point. So numdec. If not deck pressed. So if the decimal has not been pressed in the past while making this number, then we set deck press to true so that so that you can't press decimal again. And we set button val to be the decimal point. All this little thing is doing all this is doing is making sure that we can't press, we can't put multiple decimals into a number. L, so the last thing, if it's any other number button that's been pressed, then here's the new thing, and this replaces all those if statements from the last tutorial. Button val is equal to num but dot substring. So what this is doing is this is taking the string that the number button returns would be something like um, num0, num1, num2 with no spaces. What substring does is it takes a substring, so part of that string. So all that we really are looking for is we want the last, the last letter in the string. Remember that these things are called num1, num2, num3. 
So we just want the 1, 2, 3, not the num part. So we're going to look in this position. So num button dot length minus 1, so that's the first um, part of the substring that we want. So we basically want to get a substring from the, se the second last letter to num but dot length, so to the last letter. So this will give us the last letter in the name. So in our case, that's giving us num1 is getting converted to a 1. Num2 is getting converted to a 2. And we're putting that into button val. When we finish that, then we're appending the t whatever is in button val to the existing text that we already have in our screen. This is a little bit of a confusing way of doing it maybe, but it saves us 30 lines of code. Now the other thing that's changed is our op click. Remember in the last tutorial when an op was pressed then all that happened was um, we put that onto the screen. Now we're starting to do some some work with those numbers. So if not op pressed, that means if op pressed has already, if an operation has already been pressed, then we can't press operation again. For example, we can't say one plus two plus three. We have to say one plus two and then hit the equals button. If we hit the plus again, nothing happens. It just ignores it. So we're saying if the op button, so if the button that's been pressed is op add, then operator is equal to plus. Otherwise, if it's subtract, it's equal to minus, etc. And then we need to store the number that is in the that is on the screen. So num1 is equal to number of screen.txt. What this number bracket screen.txt does is it converts whatever the text is in screen.txt into a number. So it it changes its its format. Then we're going to say op pressed is true so that we can't press another um, operator. And then we're going to reset decimal press because now we're making able to make a new number which can also have a decimal. And we're going to reset the screen to be blank. Finally, our last function is equals click. And equals click is where we actually do our math. So the first thing we need to be able to do our math is we need to get the second number, which is the same as how we got the first number. And then we're going to check which operation has been pressed. So if op is plus, then total is going to equal input 1 plus input 2. If op is minus, then total is going to equal input 1 minus input 2. I have not done multiply and I have not done divide. Those you need to add yourself. Once you've added those, then you're going to make screen.txt equal to total.toString. Total.toString is the opposite of number of screen.txt. So remember this is converting text into a number. This is converting a number total into a string. Finally, we're setting equals press equal press to true so that you can't press equals multiple times. We're setting op press to false so that we can start over again and we're setting dec press to false again so that we can have decimals. Now when we run, you'll see that 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, which last time I checked was correct. So that is the second tutorial in calculators. The third tutorial, we're going to make our calculator a little better. See you then. Thanks for watching.